and her husband's relationship with Camilla Parker Bowles. Um, she was very hurt that I think she felt she was unable to give her husband the love that he wanted. She tried desperately to encourage her husband to fall in love with her. I mean, that I knew very much. Um, she wanted desperately to make her marriage to him work um, and to have a happy family relationship. Regardless of who they both were, she wanted a happy, strong family, united. And, um, and she tried desperately. And I think that she thought that he didn't try enough. And it was very hurtful to her. It perhaps made one feel less guilty about the situation. We spoke a great deal about what the future may hold for us both. And um, I think it was perhaps fun to fantasize and to believe in a situation that would quite clearly not be possible. But at the time, it seemed rather nice to get lost in, in such dreams. What were those dreams? <laughs> the dreams of being able to spend the rest of our lives together. Um, that those, that's what was wanted. It seemed a natural progression, you know, and it was rather a nice escape at the weekend to be able to come down um, and have a relaxing time in Devon. I said, um, I have a guest arriving for the weekend, and um, my mother loves entertaining and for people to be about anyway. And she said, oh, that's wonderful. Um, and I said, well, it's, um, it's Diana. And she said, oh, great, fantastic. So it was just like the arrival of a, a normal house guest. And that's how it continued for very many weekends. I think those who knew could see how much stability and joy that Diana was now portraying. And as long as that could continue, I think they were happy for it to do so. When Diana told me about her bulimia, um, and it was, you know, double dutch to me. I had no idea of the disease. I'd never heard the word before. Um, but I did a little bit of research myself. And um, obviously, it was completely out of my depth. It, it, uh, as people know now, is a, is a serious and fairly widespread problem. Um, and she went and sought professional advice about it. She, I think she was trying to tell me, or she did tell me, that she didn't suffer from it when she was with me, um, which was rather nice to know. Um, but it was also fairly so destroying for me to realize the depth of her despair and her unhappiness when we weren't together. And this is one way that she coped with it. Around about that time, um, the regiment had been posted to Germany and I was to go out um, and be stationed in Germany for two years. It was a great wrench in the relationship um, and a very stressful time. There was nothing I could do. Um, I couldn't go to the commanding officer and say, I'm afraid, Colonel, I'm not coming out to Germany. Can you post me somewhere in England? 
that, that was not possible. And, that, uh, and obviously I couldn't give him the reasons why I wanted that. Um, and I didn't want to leave her. I didn't want to let her fall back into the position that she had been in before we met. And it was at a time where it was important that she didn't feel rejected, um, which is what she'd been subjected to quite heavily beforehand. We, we kept in touch by, by mail and also by telephone. But as anyone knows, it's difficult, <laughs> you know, 900 miles away to continue in the same way. And it does make it very difficult for you. But I did try and return to, to England as much as I could, um, either fly back or drive back to England, and occasionally spend the weekend together, which again made everything worthwhile in my mind at the time. In 1991, a fundamental turning point in the relationship, the Gulf War. The lifeguard's tank regiment was put on standby to go to battle. James's affair with the Princess of Wales faced an uncertain future. I'd been in Germany probably about a year, slightly over, before being warned to, to get out to the Gulf, the Gulf War. 